so don't mind my accent too much. <laughs> um, I'm a certified personal trainer and a nutrition coach. So I was officially diagnosed with inattentive ADHD or ADD at the age of 30. I'm 33 right now. And by this time, I already um, personally achieved some fitness goals and professionally also helped many other people to get in better shape, improve their um, self-esteem and so forth. But not until that diagnosis, I, um, I truly understood what drives people to stick to their healthy routines and make long-term um, lifestyle transformations. So it took me a pretty uh, long and bumpy road myself um, to get that healthier body and mind. Uh, for many years, I actually struggled with poor body image and emotional eating, night binges and low motivation um, to consistently uh, train my body and take care of it. So I definitely wasn't always <laughs> like born with that fitness uh, edge. <laughs> Um, but you know, like following that, uh, clean diet and working out, um, it always felt like punishment to me. So for this reason, I think that I was constantly falling off the wagon and feeling like failure. And I was always looking for some shortcuts, trying to achieve better aesthetics and exercise actually, um, mainly to achieve, um, you know, better physique and make up for like cheating on my diet. So it wasn't just, like, oh, let me go work out because it's awesome. <laughs> and little did I know that uh, many of these self-sabotaging behaviors were actually rooted in my ADHD and um, poor self-soothing uh, methods that I developed early in my life. So, yeah, it was a big eye-opening thing for me to be diagnosed, and I'm glad that um, that happened. So now I can actually help other people who struggle with um, similar issues to get better physique, to be motivated for exercise, for um, healthier eating habits, and, you know, um, get in better shape and at the same time get better mind <laughs> um, because that's a very pleasant side effect yeah I love that I love that that's kind of how how you evolved into it and then once you did you recognized um, that some of the habits that you had had prior were due to your ADHD like once you were once you were diagnosed what would you say was the connection for you between ADHD and the behaviors that that you exhibited? Well, you know, for um, people with ADHD, there are a few things that um, can make them hard uh, to stick to a healthier routines. Um, well, the very basically speaking, uh, ADHD means we have lower dopamine in the brain. So... Um, it negatively affects our focus and attention, of course, but it also promotes uh, reward-seeking behaviors, you know, which often um, eating food because it's like very socially, uh, socially acceptable and food is like right here. Um, and also it's low motivation to do activities that we perceive as um, complicated and hard, such as exercise. And it's also impulsivity, another thing, uh, because we change our mind um, pretty often. Impulsivity always leads to lack of consistency. And consistency is definitely a key when it comes to developing healthy habits and achieving um, long-term results. And then there are also like skill type struggles, like poor planning, procrastination, um, impatience when... Uh, we want to get the results like we always want them yesterday, not sometime in the future. That's why we lose um, interest very often. And I also noticed that a lot of people with ADHD, they um, do have like failure mindset when they start a new diet or a new exercise. It's always, I'm just going to do it for right now, but um, I'm probably just going to fail, quote unquote, as I always do. So none of these, of course, are helpful um, with sticking to healthy routines. 
Um, yeah, that's awesome. So, so true, right? Because I think that, like you said, like just something else we're going to fail at. So we're scared to even start. Like that's where I go to sometimes. It took me years to be consistent. And then I would be consistent and then I would beat up on myself if I stopped being consistent. But that's just a cycle, right? I think that as long as we recognize, okay, you know, maybe we did stop. Like I, I've been on a roll for like over a year and then I got sick and it was just a cold. That was a horrible cold. And I'm so tired. Like I've been so tired for the last three weeks. And like, instead of doing like, um, I do Carolyn Gervin and she does like, she's a YouTuber. And so I do her whole program. And instead of that, I just, I was so tired that I wasn't doing anything. Um, and then like this week, I decided to do yoga instead of like this high intensity thing since my body was like super tired. So I think it's about finding what works for you and like, right. And being okay with that. What do you think about that? Oh yes, definitely. Um, like people with ADHD, we don't do well with deprivation and uh, rigid rules and just like this pushing and, um, you know, uh, going through this willpower struggle. This is just not like our thing <laughs> so much. Um, so doing what you love, it's definitely applying. Um, not just that. Um, I think it's important to challenge yourself. So um, coming up with activities that you love, it's important because it can help you stick with your exercise and uh, continue doing it long term. But um, if you come up with something that's challenging and new to you, that's another sort of stimulation for an ADHD. -er. And um, the last thing what I always tell people you want to um, do is... Uh, you know, put extra stress on the top of stress that you already have. If you are sick, if you don't really sleep well, like I do <laughs> for most of the time uh, this last year, because I just had a baby. Um, well, he's one year old now, but he's still not sleeping very well. And if you like constantly stressed out at work, so putting extra stress and like super hard exercise on the top of that is not really a good idea and I see a lot of uh, people who like crave that uh, stimulation they actually um, like high intensity exercises like crossfit and stuff because they like that feeling of achievement and pushing through but the problem with that is that we tend to crush afterwards because you know dopamine and this willpower is a finite resource so you're actually doing pretty good uh, not pushing yourself too hard when you're um, just not feeling like it, you're tired, you've been sick. So yoga is a great um, option in this case. Yeah, I appreciate that because um, I had somebody just kind of, I think it was my mom. She was like, why don't you do something that's less intense? And because I was, you know, upset that I wasn't being consistent um, again, you know, but she said, just do something that's gonna like, you know, relax your body, your body can't heal, you know, or regain its strength if you're pushing, pushing, pushing. So I think it's important to give ourselves some grace when it comes to that and not feel so, you know, overwhelmed or bad that, you know, we're not doing things perfectly, you know, every, every day is different, you know, and I think listening to your body is something I've never really done before. I've had some health challenges and um, I had epilepsy I do have epilepsy. <laughs> I haven't had a seizure in like 14 years since my daughter was born. Um, but I think just recognizing if I don't get enough sleep, I and I like maybe skip my medicine because I forget or whatever, I could have a seizure. So um, I have to pay attention to my body and make sure like I am getting enough sleep and not beat up on myself because that's my circumstance, right? And I have to, you know, be a little... Um, give myself a little more leeway with that. So yeah, I appreciate that so much. Val, did you have any thoughts? Yeah. Oh my gosh. What you're saying is I'm like, I actually laughed when you said that summer, I literally laughed out loud, you know, those moments. Um, yeah. When you said my mom asked me why I don't do some, why I don't just do something less intense. 
So I'm like five, one and three quarters. I have to throw the three quarters in there. And I do these, like I do high intensity interval or like the insanity workout or whatever. And I swear, you know, like that is the only way I operate is with that really intense exercise. And, um, so yeah, like, I, I don't know, you, you mentioned yoga and, you know, one of my challenges is I don't know how to just relax or, you know, shut my mind off a lot of times. It's been a practice. I'm not always perfect. And so, you know, I've tried um, yoga. I got burnt out on that. I did Bikram yoga, hot yoga for like nine months straight every single day, burnt myself out on that. But, um, you know, also something like calm or soothing, like hiking as well, kind of, I find that solace and I'm able to get into that peaceful kind of meditative state. That is like, that is my sanctuary. You know, when I'm out there, I live right in the middle of like seven mountain peaks. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so lucky. Um, so, you know, we get to, I get to just go hike, you know, and that kind of helps break up the monotony and also helps remind me to just get back in my body. Like you said, I was not, um, because of circumstances, you know, I grew up with, like, I did not associate with my body for a really long time. And I'm talking about like, you know, it's been recent years, like five years that I've actually been able to like get back in my body and feel that. So, um, yeah, I love that topic that you guys are talking about. And this is just, I, I swear every day I learned something more that's like, oh my gosh, is that ADHD? Is that normal? I thought I was the only one. So thank you. Oh, that's so good. Okay. So, um, Maria, in a second, uh, let's talk about diversifying. So, um, what Val just said kind of struck a chord. She said, we get to decide. So I think when we get bored or like you were saying, like you get kind of burnt out, it's okay to diversify and to change because as ADHDers, we need that stimulation. Um, and if you don't, that's totally fine. But if you do, and you're seeking that like dopamine, I think that that that's a good thing to remember that you can switch it up because we get to decide, right? No one decides for us. Um, and what we decide goes. So I think we need to like take some power in ourselves and say, okay, is today a good day for me today? I was like, I could do yoga or I could do my more high intense one that like exhausts me, but I love it. And I was like, no, I need to do yoga. My body is seriously just still so tired from being sick. And so, which is weird because it usually isn't, but whatever. So yeah, I think that that's like, a, like speaking to that. So Maria, tell me, um, tell me a little bit about how you may diversify your, your, um, your exercise and like how you you keep motivated yeah absolutely so uh, definitely changing things around it helps um we stay motivated because we do tend to get tired of doing the same thing over and over again and uh, there are actually um uh, scientific studies that show that uh different types of trainings are more beneficial for the brain function than just one type of training so let's say aerobic uh, training it doesn't include just running it's also like hiking and dancing and zumba things like that so well these are very uh, well studied and they do show to um, slow down age-related mental decline and reduce depression and so forth. Resistance training, which I am a big fan of because, you know, that's what I'm, uh, well, I've been doing for a living before I had my baby. Um, it actually shows to stimulate our frontal lobe. And um, this is the source of our executive function. So it's very beneficial for people with ADHD. And um, if we do it consistently, that also um, translates in better results in like regular day life. So I think when you also see that it affects positively on other aspects of your life, it's also very stimulating. And uh, another type of training is like more skill based when you learn new movements. Um, this can be like dancing and, um, you know, tennis, pickleball, boxing, like everything that's pretty new to you like your body doesn't know how how to operate and how to do this so this is very beneficial uh as well 
And if you rotate this type of trainings, this is uh, great for your brain, uh, for your um, ADHD symptoms. And it also helps us to stay more consistent because we don't get bored um, as fast. But I always tell my clients also that um, you don't want to be confusing your body also too much because I see a lot of people, they're like really jumping from one thing to another too often. And this is also not really good because you do want to get um, better uh, with practice. So you do want to start getting some results before you move on to something else. Um, so like very standard recommendations, uh, two to three days per week uh, for aerobic exercises and two to three days per week of weight training. This is for general health and for brain health in particular and you can do like 30 60 minutes for each session and i usually say that uh, rating of perceived exertion should be around like seven or eight so it should be challenging but not too hard so this way you uh, it's exciting for you it's motivating but you're also not uh, you know um, really using up all this dopamine pool and like feeling lethargic afterwards so, yeah, um, just try to use all three types of training, aerobic, resistance, and skill-based. And I think that's pretty good for anyone. Those are good, good suggestions. So having, like, even looking at the fact that, like, you do need to... Um, strengthen different parts of your body too and like maybe doing some kind of rotation like that's a great benefit for your body but also like you know like we talked about like you don't want to be bored right and I think sometimes as ADHD ADHD or whatever that's what I call it we had some discussion about verbiage the other day but I'm just gonna say ADHD ears because I kind of like that so if you don't I'm, I'm sorry but you should tell me and we'll come up with a better word but for me, being an ADHD, like I, I kind of get really hyper focused on something to begin with. And I really kind of look at it and I'm like, okay, I got this. And I think I have to finish it from like start to finish. Otherwise, you know, it's not perfect, you know, the perfection thing. So um, really getting out of that space sometimes is is helpful to kind of look at it. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it would be a good idea for some of us. Like for me, it seems like if I did like some kind of reminder in my phone, like every three or four months, and um, to kind of remind myself to do something different because sometimes we get stuck and we kind of forget. So I love, love that. Uh, so Maria, share with us like some um, tips that you have for uh, ADHD and exercise. And then we will um, open up the room in about seven minutes to um, bring people up and we can answer some questions. Uh, yes, sure. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's good to rotate things and um, uh, other uh, great trainings are involving hand-eye coordinations uh, with like coordinated use of lower and upper body. So again, this is like tennis and dancing and boxing, martial arts. So basically, whichever you like the most is good um but again it should be also challenging and uh val you also talked about yoga a little bit um yoga is great it's very very challenging for someone with adhd because it, it is really hard for us to, like slow down and um you know just bring our attention um to our body and to our breath but it's so beneficial and you don't have to go for like uh, super long meditations you can just do it for like 30 seconds a minute and then progress from there uh, just breathing techniques and like deep breathing it's so helpful um, I always talk about like box breathing it uh, brings you to this amazing um, cognitive state that's that's alert but also calm um, box breathing means that you breathe in for four seconds then hold four seconds then breathe out four seconds and hold four seconds and you do it like 10 20 times 
um, the Shavasana pose that uh, is final resting pose at the end of almost uh, every yoga practice is great. It's, again, it's very challenging. I believe it's one of the hardest poses in uh, yoga practice, but it's extremely beneficial for our impulsivity, literally uh, reshaping our brain. So if you ask how does this information um, can be applied in real life for an adhd -er, well, I'm a big, big believer in making small changes. Or better yet, making um, rules that are not too restrictive, but challenging. So when we create the environment um, to make these challenges um, easier to uh, go through, that's helpful. And one of the very effective ways to attach uh, is to attach um, the desired behavior to the one that you're already doing uh, like on a regular basis uh, without any use of willpower. So for example, um, you don't have to go to the gym every single time. Uh, if right now you literally don't do any exercise at all, start small. Um, so you're doing your morning coffee and while you're waiting until it brew, then you can just do, I don't know, 10 squats or like 10 push-ups, things like that. And you make it a rule like every day while I'm brewing my coffee, I'm doing 10 squats. This is just a rule and it's unbreakable. So when your mind starts questioning this idea, you're like, okay, you know what? I already decided the, uh, the decision is made. So I'm just going to do it. And, you know, um, it's pretty much done. <laughs> So this is, um, I think, one of the easiest way uh, for someone with ADHD to like start. Um, and then from there, you just look at the results that you're getting and how it affects your mind, your body. Pay attention to that. Stay connected. Um, and hopefully that's going to keep you more motivated to keep going. Those are awesome tips. Oh, those are so good. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Val and, um, and then we will start answering some questions. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Hello, all of the members and participants of ADHD Rise. This is an event we have going on all month long. Super excited. So if you would like more information on that, go over to ADHD Rise. Dot com, just like it says in our um, in our pictures here, ADHDrise.com, because when you rise, I rise, and we rise together. We are talking with uh, Maria Agbaba. I'm glad you said your last name because I didn't want to say it wrong. Agbaba. She is talking about fitness, exercise, and ADHD. We are so honored to have her here, you guys. She is a wealth of knowledge. So I, I hope that, you know, if you are wanting to ask a question, come on up, raise your hand up, and we will bring you up to the stage. We are super excited. Um, this Again, this event will be going on all month long. This afternoon, we have Miss um, Dr. Susan Bloomberg. She shoots it straight. <laughs> and she's going to talk about ADHD, mental health, and diagnosis. Tomorrow, we have Food and Freedom with ADHD with Madeline James. And then um, Emotional Intelligence for ADHD Children with Day Sanchez. So check it out, sign up so you get all the information. You will get an email in the morning letting you know exactly where we'll be with the Clubhouse link. And you'll get access to our ADHD Rise community, which is just popping right now. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's over on Facebook. So um, yeah, raise those hands if you'd like to come up. I know there was a couple people that raised their hands and I could not bring them up. It was really weird. So I sent you an invite. Um, I did want to make a, a comment real quick, Maria. I am so grateful for your vulnerability and for coming here and sharing about what you shared about, because, um, I don't know if I've shared about this lately or even on clubhouse, but you know, when I was younger, I was a pretty chubby kid. My mom is, you know, has no, um, understanding. She has a very severe mental illness and there's not a lot of understanding about, you know, food, exercise, things like that. So I grew up a pretty chubby kid eating McDonald's happy meals and um, drinking Dr. Pepper like it was going out of style. Right. So I always felt super uncomfortable in my body. And, you know, what ended up happening is I went on um, after a very painful divorce. I got divorced really young. I started, you know, really like, I don't, I don't know. 
um, I guess I should give a trigger warning for eating disorders here if anyone wants to get out. Okay, so I started, you know, like really like starving myself and just obsessively exercising. Like it was like I was punishing myself. I heard you say that. <coughs> and it was this punishment. And, you know, after a while I started, you know, using drugs and alcohol and, you know, that turned into binge eating, which turned into bulimia. And that was very debil like debilitating for me. And that went on for years. And what I didn't know then that I know now is that a lot of those characteristics, the extremities, the self beat up, the um, restriction is very common for ADHD. So I'm curious to know, is that something that, you know, like you, I heard you say you had experience with it, but is that something that you see is common with ADHD people? Well, you know, thank you also for your um, vulnerability, uh, Val. Um, I do actually notice that a lot of um, people with ADHD, they do struggle uh, with disordered eating tendencies, um, whether it's... Um, mindlessly snacking and then uh, also overeating then uh, being stuck in this um, starving and binging cycle um, statistics actually show that bulimia is very common in women with ADHD so yes that's absolutely the case and um, I think with a lot of undiagnosed with ADHD, it can be an issue because I definitely see disordered eating tendencies in my family. Um, and that's where I've picked up most of my, um, well, I don't want to call it bad, but unhelpful habits um, when I was a like teenager. And it really took me a long time to start looking at food differently, to start looking at my body differently and um, why I actually eat and why I exercise. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I see this a lot. Thank you so much for speaking to that, because, you know, I know what was true for me. Um, even having, you know, recovered from alcoholism and like, you know, severe cocaine addiction, like I still carried the eating disorder, even after I got sober. And, you know, it was, it was such a shameful thing for me. I mean, it was like a dark, debilitating, just shame cycle that I could not understand why I couldn't stop, even though, you know, I could, I could quit drinking, I could quit, um, like I wouldn't eat, you know, certain things I would exercise, but then I still had that. So I just wanted to speak to that in case if, and, you know, I, I'm not going to pretend like I know that everyone's story in here, but it just in case by chance there's someone who's in that right now, I want to just let you know that you are not alone. You can get well. It did take a lot of work and a lot of learning new habits like Maria teaches. But um, if you're in that, just know you're not alone and that, you know, it is, gosh, it's just such a, a dark place to be in that place where you're never good enough for yourself and your thinking is so distorted. So um, I hope that helped. Thank you. Uh, thank uh, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to add uh, one thing. Um, if uh, any of you guys do struggle with eating disorders, uh, there are a couple of things that I truly, truly recommend. Um, first of all, dieting is just not the way to live. It's not. So um, any restriction, any form of uh, dividing food into like good and bad, this is just not helpful for our brains because it really uh, feeds that um, starving and binging uh, cycle or like over-restricting cycle when people uh, really restrict most of the food and eat very little amounts. Um, so nourishing your body is definitely the way to go in here, um, particularly um, the proteins. You want to get a lot of proteins in your diet. You want to get lots of uh, healthy fats. So you want to allow uh, yourself to nourish your body and to give it uh, what it needs to thrive. That's definitely um, probably like if you take anything out of this conversation, take this. If you do struggle with any um, disordered eating tendencies. Thank you for that, Maria. That was beautiful. And that's so true because that was definitely where it started for me 
was the quote unquote good foods and the quote unquote bad foods. And then that started the cycle. So I, I, I'm so grateful that you spoke to that. Thank you. With that, my beautiful friend, I love your new photo, by the way, Andrea, can we just like admire and gawk Andrea for a moment? Because it is so pretty with those feather earrings. Oh my gosh. I was going to say that earlier in Damon's room, but I was like, no, I'll just, I'll wait. <laughs> but hello, Andrea. So good to see you. Did we lose you, Andrea? Maybe we'll Andrea, Andrea might have missed my my comment there, my compliments. Dang it. Are you there? It's All right. Well, let's, go to, <laughs> let's go to Diane. Diane, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Hello. Um, great, great topic. Super excited that you're talking about ADHD and exercise. Um, it's been the thing that um, has helped kind of like been a, a generator for my brain. I know that I've been able to move forward um, with my ADHD before I knew I had it because of movement. Um, and so I'm super, super excited about the topic. Um, yeah, so um, I actually have, um, I don't know, is it, is it free to, um, cool to share a, um, a free resource I have on, on, fitness and yeah that's fine. fine that's fine okay okay cool um yeah so what i did was um i'm all about like breaking things down into smaller pieces and um my background is in um uh, muscle therapy for the last 35 years but what i do is i put together this week i'm in the middle of a group called um how to sit and be fit for all those people that need that little extra combination of the mindset boost and the action boost to get you to move um, in those little moments throughout the day so that you can start the process. And so, yeah, um, I'm excited we're doing that and it's fun and um, I just love talking about this subject. So, so glad you have this here. Thank you so much, Diane. Thanks for sharing that. Did you have any questions for Maria before we moved on? Oh, no, just if we can be friends, because I love it when people <laughs> talk, about, it. <laughs> talk more about fitness and especially with uh, how it relates to the mind and the more people we can um, talk, have talking about it, hopefully we can get more and more um, people feeling better. So, yes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Diane. Okay, let's move on to Chris. Welcome, Chris. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Maria, for having this. Um, I was a ballerina and a figure skater, and um, I did a lot of movement stuff until July of 2020, um, when apparently you need cartilage under your kneecap. It's dumb, but I don't have it anymore. So, And they won't put me in a wheelchair because it'll make all the other parts of my legs not really work. So I just have to walk in pain all the time. So I um, can't do distances anymore. And I can't really do any high impact on my legs. And when I do like seated, when I do arm stuff, it's incredibly boring um, for me. Like there's a couple that I, I've noticed I do sweat when I do them. But like, basically for people that are in wheelchairs to do arm exercises, but I, I'm not interested. So I was wondering if you had any ideas to help me be interested in movement. I, I loved it. I just, everything that I know and that I like, I no longer have access to. So any thoughts would be greatly appreciated. My name is Chris and I am completely, <laughs> um hi Chris um yes well um there are actually a lot of things that uh you can do to like walk around uh your pain um mainly resistance training would be probably your best bet because what you do want to, uh is to build strength around your joints around your muscles um I'm not sure. Uh, no, I can't do anything with my legs that is not prescribed by the PT. Yes. That's what they told me. So I can't do any kind of resistance stuff with my legs. I only have my upper body that I can actually work with from an exercise perspective. 
Gotcha. Okay. Well, you know, uh, this is a tougher case, definitely. Um, working on your upper body would be like one of the best options, I guess, for you then. Uh, just focus on progressive um, overload. So you do want to, because it's really hard to, like, like you said, to stay motivated. Um, you want to switch things up and mainly you want to uh continue increasing uh the weights or you also can work on your back um because all your upper body i guess is all fine and back is extremely important you know the core uh strength is important for our balance it's important for um uh, proper breathing for everything so yeah um upper body would be <laughs> probably the best bet as hard as it might seem right now and uh, there are a lot of um, stretching uh, techniques that you can also do uh, to like walk around that uh, problematic joint. Um, yeah, that's probably <laughs> what I would recommend because you don't want any high impact movement, obviously. Um, you want it slow and um, as controlled as possible. Right, but slow and controlled is boring, is my point, right? So I don't know how to make slow and controlled interesting. And any ideas you have around that um, is, um, I would love to hear. Um, I have clients, uh, I had clients uh, who struggled with um, different pains in their bodies. And, um, well, their doctors prescribe them to, like, not work for, let's say, their lower or upper body. Um, they were able to uh, work their full body, just, you know, not particularly the joints that were bothering them so much. Um, but one thing I always recommend them is to be careful what you say to yourself. Uh, this is a very big deal because our brain will always um, prove us right uh, without even us realizing it. So like if you um, do the exercise and all you can think of is how you hate this, this is absolutely mm, not helpful for, um, you know, for like longer term goals. And because what you do is you're using that pool of dopamine to push through that exercise. And like I told earlier, uh, dopamine or slash willpower is a finite resource, but you're also not getting that um, good feeling that typically comes from dopamine release in our brain. So you're just basically like wasting it. And um, it's very important uh to get that good feeling out of the exercise, even if it feels like you're lying to yourself at the moment, you want to come up with the reasons why exactly you're doing, like what's your goals? Like you want to stay healthier because, you know, if you are not able to uh, move your lower body, even if you only uh, moving and working on your upper body, that's still helpful because our bodies are designed uh, to be moving. Um, if they are staying still for too long, this causes a lot of inflammation and inflammation is bad for our brain and for our overall health. So uh, what you need to do is definitely to come up with at least five to 10 reasons why this exercise is particularly good for you. Um, and there are definitely, there are benefits. Um, you know, the more muscle mass you have, the, the faster metabolism you have, because with age, we do lose muscle mass. And that's why uh, most of people uh, who are older, they um, say that they have a low metabolism and they, they gain weight even from like looking at the cookie uh, because they have very low muscle mass. So you increase your muscle mass with the, uh, this type of training and um, you improve your brain. Again, resistance training is very good for um, maintaining uh, your brain function and also it slows down your aging. So there are so many benefits. And if you continue repeating those benefits to yourself at the times when you really, really don't feel like pushing through, um, this can be very helpful because it will keep you motivated uh, over the long term.
Thank you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I love all that advice. I never, I mean, I try and think about it. Like it sounds super cliche in some ways, but when, um, when you think of, when you think of something negatively, when you think that in your mind, that's how it professes. So, and it does feel like we're lying to ourselves sometimes, but I um, have done some work personally where I actually replace my negative thought with a positive thought, even though I don't necessarily believe it at the time, but I'm training my brain to go back to a thought. Like if I have the thought that, you know, my kid is super disrespectful. If I have that thought, I try and reframe the idea. And I say to myself, when I think that I change that thought and I think um, my kid is a teenager and he's doing his job right not that his job is to be disrespectful but his job is to learn how um how to be an adult right like he's not an adult and he's not always going to do the things that seem adult like because that's what they're learning so just looking like kind of shifting your perspective while you're exercising it's it's a thing because if I sit there and tell myself how much I hate that the whole time I mean you think it you're going to but redirecting your thoughts to um, a, a different space a different perspective and replacing it with um, a thought that will serve you you know because if you sit there and think that the whole time it's not going to serve you you know so just in experimenting you know um, you get to decide right so I think that was great advice thank you so much Maria okay Christy welcome to the stage Hi. Oh, I was going to check and see if I was going to check and see if Andrea was back, but um, Christy, oh, go ahead and yes. then we no, will have Andrea. Andrea. Oh yeah, I forgot. I saw a mic flash. Well, Andrea, yes, you sorry. Andrea, oh, you there? Just, 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 just really quick. I am here, here, but um, I <laughs> wanted to say something to Chris. I don't know if anyone can hear me because my yes. earbuds are acting weird. We can um, hear. But uh, Chris, you might really want to speak with your physical therapist about, or you might want to get a different physical therapist, because if they're telling you not to use your legs at all, that is like really incorrect information, like honestly. <laughs> so um, I, would, I would highly suggest that you find out more about um, what's going on with your, with your, um, you're saying that you don't have any cartilage. Um, and I can definitely talk to you offline about this, but um, it's it's really really important as uh, as Maria has been talking about because movement is how our bodies really work. Our bodies are designed to move, and if we aren't moving, then we have a ton of other problems that happen. And she already talked about so many of them. Um, and inflammation is really really key, and it does cause inflammation throughout your body if you're not moving. And um, it's just super important. And I'm speaking as a chiropractor and a nutritionist, and I I know a lot about how bodies work. So, um, yeah, that that's that's mainly what I wanted to say. So, anyway, um, Andrea, uh, go ahead. <laughs> it's Christy, and I'm done speaking. Thank you, Christy. You're awesome to give some amazing advice. Um, and I wanted to say, Andrea, I don't know if you heard me earlier. But I was swooning over your new picture. It is so beautiful. I noticed it earlier. And um, I love your feather earrings. And you just look so pretty. So I'm very, very excited about your new picture. Thank you, Val. And thank you, Summer and Maria, for holding the room. I did not hear it earlier because I had a phone call at work that sucked me in. And I missed everything up until just now. So um, hopefully I won't repeat anything or go over stuff or whatever. But I thank you. I, I, uh, I've gotten a number of compliments on that picture. And it's, uh, you make me very happy to hear that. Um, fitness and ADHD. <sighs> my struggles have always been to do exercise on my own. You know, the old do push-ups or sit-ups or whatever. One, two, three, squirrel. Wait, what number am I at? Ah, hell with it. I'm done. That's what happens with exercise with me most of the time. However, I have found one thing that works. It's walking. I can walk because I can give myself a destination. And it doesn't matter if I count or not. If there's the point where I stop and turn around and come back. 
So I've been doing about an hour, hour, 20 minutes every morning. And then on the weekends, I do two hours or maybe two and a half. Uh, so five, up, five miles during the week and then maybe between eight and 11 or 12 on the weekends. Um, it's about all I can do. And at first I was able to lose a whole bunch of weight you know, over the first three, four months. And I wasn't eating all that much and just lost like 50 pounds. But then I sort of hit a plateau and I can't quite seem to lose any more, although I really could use to lose another 20. Um, you know, and finding a way to integrate a bit more, uh, exercise into my mornings that isn't so terribly difficult with my ADHD would be nice. But at the same time, I've been able, I've been doing this walk now for like 18 months, uh, every day, except for the worst of the weather days. And I'm actually kind of proud of myself for that because I never could do exercise before, except when I was in the military and somebody else was calling cadence. I'm Andrea and I'm done talking. Uh, hi, Andrea. Um, well, thanks for sharing and um, good job, you know, sticking with it for quite a long time. Um, usually what I advise to, uh, the clients that hitting plateau is, um, switching things up definitely, because you see our bodies are designed to get better at what we are doing. And, um, basically when you do any sort of cardio, so what you tell your body is to be better at cardio and to burn more calories during this cardio. And how it responds in the long term is actually um, burning less calories um, because it's thinking pretty much like, well, um, this person is working out like uh, walking every single day for um, pretty long time. So how can I get better at this? Uh, well, let me reduce the amount of calories um, to make sure that this person doesn't like starve um, his or herself and, um, you know, kind of get better at this. So when we do the resistance training or weight training, um, the body uh, senses the absolutely different signal. It basically senses, okay, well, this person is lifting heavy weight, so it probably uh, wants me to increase muscles so um, uh, he or she can get better at resistance training and lifting heavier weights so let me increase that muscle mass and muscle mass actually is very metabolically demanding so it burns through a lot of calories so you actually burn more calories during the day if you have more muscles on board so um the best way for you is actually to switch things up a little bit and uh start doing the very opposite um type of training that will send the different signals to your brain um such as resistance training uh not necessarily like really hardcore you know um like cross speed and like living super heavy weights fast nothing like that just um you know slow and control until you really practice and get better at those movements so maybe this will be a new beginning for you for like a new type of trainings and um if you're doing it mostly at home uh, as i understood and you know like around neighborhood where you walk around then um, just get a set of um, dumbbells. That's the easiest way. And right now there's lots of videos on YouTube. There are a lot of uh, online programs that you can um, uh, participate in. And there are other people in it so you can like stay motivated and accountable at the same time. I really find this very helpful for people with ADHD. Like accountability and support is a really big thing. So, like, when other people show up in the class, then you just do it, too, because, you know, well, that's, again, decided for you. So, yeah, resistance training uh, would be a great option for you right now, and it would help you um, tone up a little bit and lose uh, that extra few pounds of yours that, you're <laughs> that you want to. Thank, Thank you. you, Maria. That's some fantastic advice. Andrea, how are you feeling? Um, it's great advice, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to follow it. I, I've got schedule issues. And like I said, one, two, three squirrel. I, I just, I repetitive exercises of any type drive me absolutely bonkers, even in groups. Um, so I'm not sure I can make that work for myself, but I, 
thank you for the information. And I, I hear you. I need to find some way of switching it up. So I'll, I'll be thinking on it and working on it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, well, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, you're uh, good. Uh, Go ahead. There are lots of things, actually, that you can do. Um, like, you I, you really need to decide this for yourself. Um, what can help you stick with it? Like, whether it's um, the favorite music or, you know, you can always listen an audiobook or, like, podcast while you're doing it. So maybe this can be helpful. Um, you know, um, talking to a friend that can come up and um, get it done with you. So there are a lot of things that can help you um but this is very individual i find it um you just need to like sit down and think to yourself what actually can help you be more motivated to it what could be um the reasons and just try them out without trying you won't really know thanks thanks so much maria for all of your knowledge and we really, really appreciate that. Val, do you have any um, closing thoughts that you want to share? Um, yes, yeah, sure. Um, so, like I said earlier, exercise uh, and proper nutrition are extremely important for people with ADHD. Um, it's important for our brain health and our daily function. Um, one little tip, I guess, also that I would like to share for people who want to, um, like the activity that they, um, don't necessarily like <laughs> at this moment, but they know that, uh, can be very beneficial for them is, uh, what you don't want to do is to spike your, uh, dopamine neither before nor after that activity that actually shows to be, uh, detrimental for, long-term results um so basically if you um decide to exercise right for like 30 minutes or you know what start again with small goals if right now you don't exercise at all so like 10 minutes of resistance training at home so you don't want to get um your stimulant medication and then whole bunch of like coffee and um or like energy drink or anything that will really really excite you right before that uh, because then you get that dopamine drop and motivation drop. So you, you're you going to be dragging through the whole workout, even if it's just 10 minutes, still you're going to be like, oh my gosh, why even I started? And you also don't want to spike your dopamine right after. So I see a lot of people doing this mistake by um, promising themselves a reward right after. So like, I'm going to get that big milkshake afterwards, or I'm going to, I don't know, uh, get new sneakers. So when we often rely on this external reward, that's not really um, directly connected to this uh, activity that you want to start liking, then um, what we get, like the message in our brain is that, we're only doing it for the rewards so this activity is not really important so it's the same like when you're teaching kids to um, eat healthier you um, it's not always good to tell them you know like if you're gonna eat that whole wholesome meal then you're gonna get the dessert you know that um, in the long run this is not very helpful because all they want is to get that dessert and they thinking that the meal is actually you know just uh, like garbage <laughs> so the same thing happens with exercise if you want to start liking them um you want to find um that interest in the challenge of going through that hardship and yoga also teaches that um in many occasions like when you hold that hard pose that is super challenging but you breathe through that and you really focus on holding on and on, on your body sensations and on just like calming your mind down that's extremely helpful in um liking this activity um in the future so that you can actually stick with it i don't know i hope that makes sense <laughs> okay okay there you are okay i think i lost you for a second so maria where can we find you thank you so much for all of that information it has been such a uh, refreshing thing to hear all of this stuff because I feel like I do I get stuck so where can people find you if they want to work with you and like your social stuff 
Yeah, uh, so you can find me on Instagram, um, ADD and Fit. That's uh, my nickname over there. And you can also go to my website. It's addandfit.com. I do have some um, prices for um, like programming and everything over there. But currently, I'm not taking any new clients because my main client right now is my <laughs> one-year-old. So um, I work with my old clients and, you know, just honestly don't have time for the new ones. And, but the good thing that I am working on an online program that should be done by the end of this year like seriously fingers crossed because uh, I'm working hard on it it's going to be amazing particularly done for people with ADHD um, to help them find that motivation and there's a, a very good structure um, this one is going to be for um, healthy diet uh, the exercise program going to be um, next year hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, if you just want to stick with me, sign up for my um, newsletter. And yeah, that's how you can find me. Yeah, thanks so much, Maria. Okay. Um, um, uh, let's see what you I just saw your name. Okay, Flukami. Yes. Are you up here? I just Yeah, oh, there you are. Do you have a quick question? I didn't even see. Uh, yeah, quick question slash comment. I just saw this room very excited. Um, I <laughs> struggle with ADHD and working out in general. And I just listened to the last part of, I can't remember who was speaking and they basically said, I hate doing anything repetitive, even if it's group exercises and I'm the same way. Um, and so sometimes I feel like what I should do and what actually works are completely different. Right. So for me, I just, I love to dance. So I've taken group dance classes because it's a different routine. Um, I have a goal of, I kind of have a goal of like perfecting it, but I also, it's like tricking myself into doing it, but also like I'm doing yoga tonight with a friend. And so sometimes doing things with somebody else has helped. Um, and I just, I don't know. It's just like, I know what like is like the perfect way to do things. But then like, for me, I'm like, you know what, at this point, me just going and doing the thing is the goal, no matter like, what if if I have to treat if I have to trick myself into eating ice cream afterwards to go to work out then I'm just going to do it <laughs> and then later on I can figure that everything else out but it's like getting in the habit is like the goal right now so I'm done speaking that's I just wanted to share that yeah habits are key you know and sometimes we do have to do things when when we don't want to I mean I really do have to work work on that that mindset because I have depression and sometimes I I'm like constantly trying to trick my mind right I'm trying to get there and and sometimes I'm like no 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 and then, you know you have these conversations with your with your brain but sometimes you know the best thing to do is just move just start so I love that so thank you so much for your comments so you guys this is the end of our room and I just wanted to share a special offer that I'm doing for all of you amazing people that have signed up for the ADHD Rise Summit. So if you go to my website, livelifeclearly.com, you will see um, an offer for four weeks of coaching um, for an amazing value. So if you are um, registered for ADHD Rise, you go to ADHDrise.com, um, you'll see that there as well. And I'm just super excited because I've loved some of the intimacy that we've been able to have here. And this is like a one-time offer. I'm doing it for people that do ADHD Rise. And I'm I'm super excited to do that because it's been um it's been a really big blessing, right? Because I've just been learning so much about um all kinds of ADHD and it's been a little refreshing because I'm so into like I have three teenagers. I'm talking to parents with teenagers. And, and so sometimes it's nice to like go outside of that. So yeah, so go to my website, livelifeclearly.com. The link actually is in my Instagram bio. So that's probably the best way to get it. And I have that right at the top in my link tree. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And make sure you go sign up for ADHD Rise at ADHDrise.com. And at 1.30, we will have Dr. Susan um it's not Blumberg. It's she told me last time. Blumberg is how her last name is spelled. 
So join us um, at 1.30 Pacific today for that hot topic on mental health and ADHD. So thank you so much, everyone. Val, sorry, say bye. <laughs> I forgot. Say bye? Yeah, well, I get nervous and then I forget you're there. And so then I was like, oh, okay, oh, everyone, oh. bye. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, Val. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for everyone who came up and spoke, everyone who shared, everyone that was holding space. And remember, this is ADHD Rise. We are going all month long. So check out the schedule at ADHDrise.com. My name is Val, and I'm so just grateful for you guys. And um, with that, we'll go ahead and breathe in all the positive energy that we got today. Let's get motivated to take care of our selves and our lives and our bodies. Thank you so much, Maria, for being here. And I love you guys. With that, we will shut down the room in just a moment. Bye. Thank you, Maria, Bye. for being here. Bye. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you, inviting Maria. me. <laughs> you are yes. amazing. Thank you. Is that your husband in the audience? Uh, Umit? Umit, yeah, that's my husband. Oh, my God. I saw the last name and I was like... Wait a minute. That's yep. adorable. <laughs> That's you guys are cute. He wanted to listen. <laughs> of course. That's a good husband right there. So that's good. Yep. Hello, Umit. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.